Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back. In today's video we are going to learn a new integration technique. We are going to learn something about the Leibniz rule for integration, also known as the differentiation under the integral sign. So what is it about? We are going to talk about something like this. So imagine we have a derivative in terms of t of some integral a to b of some arbitrary function f in terms of x and t times dx. And we can use the Leibniz rule to interchange the integral sign and the differentiation. So that's the same as the integral from a to b of the partial derivative in terms of t of f in terms of x and t times dx. So that's what we're going to derive today, but that's just a special case. We are going to derive the whole Leibniz formula, including um, the Leibniz formula for um, upper and lower bound in terms of t. So let's go ahead and get started. You are going to need three little things today. You are going to need the limit definition of a derivative and also the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus and also you are going to need the mean value theorem. So if you don't know anything about it, I'm going to explain it a bit later on. So stay tuned. Okay, let's go. Before getting started with the proof, you should remember what we wanted to find out. So we wanted to show that we can interchange the derivative and the integral sign. So what we need is some kind of integral and derivative. Okay, let's define it an integral first. So let's say it's i in terms of x and t. And we are going to define it as follows. So that's the integral from a in terms of t up to b in terms of t of some arbitrary function f of x and t times dx. And now we are going to use the limit definition of a derivative on this integral. So we are going to find out what i prime is. So that's di over dt. And this is equal to the limit as some small change in t approaches zero of. Okay, now we have to plug in our small changes. So what we get is i in terms of x and t plus some small change in t minus i of x and t over this small change in t. Okay, so far so good. What we can do now is factor out this one over delta t and then we can plug all of our new information into our integral. So it's pretty straightforward to be honest. So what we end up with is the limit as delta t approaches zero of one over delta t times. Okay, now we are going to plug in our information about t. Remember, our upper and lower bound are also dependent on t. So we have to say that our lower bound is now a plus a small change in a up to b plus a small change in b. So let's plug this in. So our first integral is a is from a to delta a up to b plus delta b of. Okay, now we've got an arbitrary function f of x and t plus delta t times dx minus our original integral that we've got here. So that's just the integral from a to b of f in terms of x and t times dx. Hmm, what could we do next? So in the next step, we are going to use the linearity of the integral. So we can split this weird integral a bit up. Okay, so let's split it up. So we've got the limit as delta t approaches zero of one over delta t. Okay, now our first integral is going to be the integral from a plus delta a to a of f in terms of x and t plus delta t times dx. Okay, the next one is going from a to b. So plus the integral from a to b of f in terms of x, t plus delta t times dx. And our last integral is going from b to b plus delta b. So that's plus the integral from b to b plus delta b of f in terms of x, t plus delta t times dx and also uh, we have to subtra uh, subtract this one. So minus the integral from a to b of f in terms of x and t 
times dx. Hello. There are always students running into here and it's so confusing. Uh, that's the danger about filming in the university. Still, let's continue. So, um, we found this out and now we can simplify a bit. So, there are two integrals with the same boundaries, so we can bring them together. Also, let's bring this integral to the same form as this one. So, if we just take uh, a minus one, uh, multiply it to here, we can uh, turn the boundaries around. So, that would mean that we've got the limit as delta t approaches zero of one over delta t. Okay, what do we get? So. Let's start off with this one. So that's the integral from a to b of f x t plus delta t minus this integral right here. So we've got f in terms of x and t. Okay, times dx. The next one is this integral. So we've got plus the integral from b to b plus delta b of f in terms of x t plus delta t. Hello. God damn it, the next one. That was the, fir the third one. That's <laughs> so annoying. Okay, let's move on. Uh, times dx. And also, we've got this integral, but with the boundaries changed. So minus the integral from a to a plus delta a of f in terms of x and t plus delta t times dx. And we are done with the first few steps. And now we are going to take a look at the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus states that if we've got some function f that goes from some closed interval a to b to the reals, and if we've got some primitive capital F of this function f, so we've got a primitive which goes from the closed interval a to b onto the reals, then this little uh, equation holds. So that's the integral from a to b of this function f in terms of x times dx equals to the primitive in terms of b minus the primitive in terms of a. And you should be familiar with that. So that's a really simple thing you should know. Okay. And now we are going to use the mean value theorem and we can compute both of uh, this we just found out. Okay, so the mean value theorem states that on a closed interval, a to b, um, a closed interval, okay, <laughs> there's at least one point c which change of slope is equal to the slope between a and b. Or you could say geometrically, You've got some point A and B, and you've got a curve C. Okay, uh, and you've got a curve. And then there is a point C, and you can draw a tangent line, tangent to the curve. And the tangent line is parallel to the secant that goes through A and B. So that's what the mean value theorem says. Okay, what could we do with that? We can make a little formula out of this uh, little thing. So. That's, that just means that f prime of c, the change of slope in c, equals to the function f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And we can use this because hmm, this kind of looks like the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that's great. We could plug this in and use it on that one. So let's rewrite this a bit. So that means that f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime of c times b minus a. Okay, that's, that's pretty nice. And now let's take a look at this integral, for example. We are going to solve this one now. So that means that, that the integral from b to b plus delta b of f in terms of x t plus delta t times dx equals two. Okay, at first we are going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that means that we've got a primitive in terms of x and we are now going to use the upper bound. So that's b plus delta b minus f of x, capital F of x, 
and the B value, the lower bound. Okay, hmm, what else could we do? Now we can use the definition of the mean value theorem. So that means there is the derivative at some point C, but the derivative of a primitive is just a function itself. So that's just a function evaluated at the point C and T, because we got two variables, uh, times, okay, and now we've got the upper bound minus the lower bound, so that's B plus delta B minus B. And we can simplify this a bit further, so B minus B cancels out, so we end up with F in terms of C and T times delta B. So that's great, we solved it somehow. And now we are going to take a look at the limit that we use on this function. So if we are going to, lose, uh, to use the limit as delta T approaches zero, then something great is going to happen because our upper bound is in terms of T. And if we use the limit on this upper bound, that would mean that delta T, T goes to zero, and that would mean that delta B also goes to zero. So we are going to evaluate the integral from B to B. In normal case, this would be zero, but we can say it otherwise. If we use the mean value theorem, that means there's no point between B and B other than B. So we are going to evaluate this integral at some constant function f in terms of b and t. Okay, so that means that the limit when delta t approaches zero of f ct times delta b, this goes to f of b comma t times delta b. That's great. We just used the limit really smart. And yeah, and we can also do this use this on the other integral. So that's completely the same. So that means, I'm going to write it here, that the limit as delta t approaches zero of f of uh, c comma t times delta a. If we take, uh, if we use this limit on this function, that would mean that we end up with the function evaluated at the point a times delta a. That's great. And now we can plug all of this new information into our equation and then we are nearly done. So let's conclude what we've gathered. Oh, I hope you're so excited as me. Okay, so now what we end up with is the limit as, that was our original equation. So that's the limit as delta t approaches zero of one over delta t times. Okay, now we've got this integral. Nothing changed with this one. So that's the integral from a to b of f in terms of x and t plus delta t minus f of x and t times dx. Okay, we found out what this one is. That one is nothing else than plus some constant function f evaluated at b and t times delta b minus some constant function evaluated at a and t times delta a. Okay, that's nice. And now we can distribute this one over delta t into here. So that's the limit as delta t approaches zero of, okay, now we've got an integral again. T minus f of x and t over delta t times dx plus the constant function in terms of b times delta b over delta t minus the constant function evaluated at a times delta a over delta t. Okay, and now we are going to take the limit of every part of this um, equation. Okay, one thing you might ask yourself is can we just interchange this limit with this integral because the integral is just the limit of a sum as the sum approaches infinity. For our purposes, we are going to say yes, we can. We are just going to say without any restrictions, yes, we can. Okay, so let's just do that and let's see what we get. So if we take the limit on this one here, that would mean that's just a difference quotient. So that's the derivative of b and t. 
Same with here, that's just a different quotient. So that's the derivative of a and t. Okay, and now we are going to take the difference quotient in here. If we do this, you see we've got um, a function in terms of two variables. So that means we have to take the partial derivative. And then we are done. So what we end up with in the end is just the integral from a to b of the partial derivative uh, in t of the function f in terms of x and t times dx plus some constant function in b times the derivative db dt minus constant function in a times the derivative of a in t and then we are done by god we are done i'm sorry I've tried filming this video for like the fifth time and it failed so miserably every time. I hope this was a bit better. It, it's just so hard. To, I don't know. It was really hard to film this one. <laughs> and I hope this worked out a bit better. So we are done. And like I said before, the thing in the beginning was just a special case. Because notice if our um, upper and lower bound are independent of t, that would mean that if we uh, differentiate b on t, then b would just vanish because it would just be a constant. So this would become zero and also with this one here because a is also not in terms of t. So that would mean what we end up with in the special case that the upper and lower bound are constants, uh, we would just end up with this interchange of the uh, integral and the derivative. Okay, and to conclude all of this, let's write this here. Oh. Like I said before, I'm so glad that I finally finished this one. I, I hope it's okay this time. Please leave your feedback in the comments. I think I'm getting a bit better uh, video after video. But yeah, thank you for watching. I haven't got my dog here this time because he's at home. <laughs> I'm at the university here, are no dogs allowed. But uh, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe and recommend me. And yeah, I wish you a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you.